Welcome to iLecture Online, and here we're going to take a look at some more Lewis structures. In this case, they're a little bit more complicated than the ones we saw before. A little bit more difficult to figure out how to put a Lewis structure together, how that molecule is put together. So now we're going to take a look at nitric acid, HNO3. And so uh, let's write down what the number of valence electrons are for each of these atoms. For hydrogen, of course, that is one valence electron. For nitrogen, uh, there we have five valence electrons, and for oxygen, we have six valence electrons. Of course, there's three oxygen atoms here for a total of 18 valence electrons, plus five, plus one. That would be a total of 24 valence electrons that are going to be used in all the bonding here. And that's going to be a help because we want to make sure we have the right number there and, all, and of course, that the octet rule is uh, satisfied. Uh, next, we're going to take a look and see here that nitrogen has the lowest electronegativity. It's lower than oxygen. Of course, hydrogen doesn't count. It's just an appendage of one of the atoms. And uh, also, it has the fewest number of valence electrons, so we expect that to be the center of the molecule. So let's put nitrogen here. Now, where are the oxygens going to be and where is the hydrogen going to be? Well, notice that since nitrogen has five valence electrons, it would like to have eight valence electrons, it's looking to make three bonds. Now there's three oxygen atoms, and of course those oxygen atoms want to have at least one bond uh, so that they come up with enough valence electrons. Um, hmm, although oxygen really likes to have two bonds, so hmm, that becomes a little bit more complicated. So let's start out with one bond for each. So we have one oxygen, one oxygen, one oxygen, like that. And then let's say that one of the three oxygens makes a bond with hydrogen. Now, in this particular case, since this oxygen has two bonds, that means we have two extra electrons that are being shared, one with nitrogen, one with oxygen. This oxygen should be happy now because with the other four electrons, notice it started with six, it has four free electrons, the last two were then used to make bonds, and so now we have an octet rule satisfaction here that this oxygen has the correct number of electrons available. This hydrogen also has enough electrons available now because part of the time you can use two of these, and so in a sharing mechanism, that hydrogen is satisfied as well. Okay, uh, nitrogen, which has three bonds right here, so three of the five electrons are used, so it should have two more electrons right here. And in this case, since this oxygen used one of its electrons for bonding with this nitrogen, it should have five left, like so, and this one should have five left, like so. One, two, three, four, five, but notice that they did not satisfy the octet rule. Um, so that's, that is a problem. So what is going to happen here is that one of these is going to make another bond here with this nitrogen, so to make a double bond so that it would then follow the octet rule. So here you can see that the way things are laid out here, this oxygen does not have eight electrons in its valence shell, this oxygen does not have eight electrons in its valence shell, even with the two that are being used for sharing with nitrogen. So something has to happen here. We're going to take one of these electrons and put them over here, make a double bond. So if we make a double bond, things will then shift. So I'm going to redraw this now with nitrogen in the center. This oxygen here is okay. We have a hydrogen there. We have two electrons here. So that's okay. We're going to make a double bond with this oxygen, like so. That means we now have four electrons left over here. Now the octet rule is satisfied with this double bond. Now we have a bond over here. So we have two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen now is satisfied because it, uh, uh, it now has eight electrons available. But what happened to these two electrons right here that it had before? Well, they can no longer be there because otherwise the octet rule would be violated. And so now what happens is that one of those two was used in the sharing here to make a double bond, and the extra one can be donated to this oxygen. So instead of five, it now has six. And now we're good. So something very special happened here. First of all, we realized that starting with single bonds, we had a problem. These oxygens did not have enough valence electrons. So we could partially satisfy it with taking one of these five electrons, putting it in here, taking one of these electrons right here, putting it in here to make a second bond. So we need two electrons, of course, to make a bond. So now we have a second bond. So now we can see that this 
uh, oxygen now has eight valence electrons, so it is satisfied. And by making the second bond, we now have a situation where the nitrogen has part of the time a total of eight electrons. So this last electron that it had, that was over here, needed to go somewhere. It cannot stay there. O this oxygen right here only had five electrons. It needs a sixth electron, so this electron then went over here to form a sixth electron around the oxygen. And now everybody has plenty of electrons. Eight electrons for this oxygen, eight electrons for this one, and two, four, six, eight electrons for this one, eight for nitrogen, and two for hydrogen. So the octet rule is now satisfied with this arrangement. But we're not out of the woods yet. The reason is we want to make sure that we use the proper number of valence electrons. If we don't have a total of 24 electrons here, we still have a problem. We need to see if we can do something different. So let's check the electrons. We have 246 plus 4 plus 4 here. So that's a total of 14. Now for the bonds, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 electrons in the bonding. And the total of them would give us 14, 24 electrons. And that is the number that we needed. So it looks like that's the proper arrangement. There's the proper Lewis structure for nitric acid. Notice that it's a little bit more complicated here. And we did have to do some rearrangement of the electrons to come out with the octet rule being followed and the proper number of valence electrons being used. So there you go. That's the Lewis structure of nitric acid.